months from now, we will have drilled up every prospect in the local Char Basin, we'll have finished our development plan, we will have defined the pipeline, you know, whether it's a single Kenya or the Uganda Kenya or Somalia, uh, Sudan, um, Uganda Kenya pipeline. We will have drilled at least two wells in every one of the um, other basins, so we'll have a pretty good idea what's in those. 18 months from now, which is what I'm gearing my funding to get me to, um, we will make a strategic decision. So at that point, um, probably in combination with Carlo, Carlo has expressed the same sentiment to the market. Do they know what they did in Uganda? They basically brought in CNOC and Total to carry them through development. So I think our, our number one choice of what to do in the longer term is to start a process, hopefully for those people that were in the Tanganyika um, process, get a bidding war between the largest oil companies in the world, the, 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 the Indian, Chinese, Japanese, NOCs, and, and, and basically have them come in and carry us for development. But the only negotiating point being the only biddable item, as, as we like to call it, is what percentage will they let us keep and be carried to development? It depends on how good it is from here on. I would expect it to be 20 to 35% in that range that we can keep and have full carry to development. Now, once we have, if we have that, then then I think we have, we, we have a chance to expand and become a, a bigger company. Uh, the other alternative, which is always an alternative in the London group, is uh, if somebody's willing to just pay us cash and just buy the whole company. You know, this works well. I think most people are pretty, most Tanganyika shareholders are pretty happy to not in Syria right now. Um, and I think, uh, um, you know, uh, there's, there's always an argument to take the money and, and go do something else. So I think the, uh, um, there will be a capital gains tax imposed by the Kenyan government. Um, I'll never say this publicly, but that, uh, maybe I'm saying it publicly, but put off your cameras for a minute. Um, but the, uh, it, it's, it's not, you know, we're not happy about that, but um, if, if there does come to pass that the capital gains tax, it'll sort of just be part of the, 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 the price of, of purchase. In other words, we would expect to pass that on to the the shells or exons or the CNOCs of the world. So I think that's really the point next in the middle of 2015. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll understand pretty much what we got by then. We'll have built probably about 40 wells by then, and we'll have a, a pretty good understanding of what we've got. Then we can make an informed decision. You know, my issue right now is selling much interest and even that 10% interest we may regret um, is that we just don't understand what we've got. I think neither Lucas or, or I want to be the idiot that have the entire next North Sea and sold it after we built three uh, discovery wells. I think we need to stay in long enough to at least understand how good this thing could be before we can make a move. I think well, we can take one or two final questions before we uh, have the sandwiches and uh, me and Keith and Alex will, will stay here for the sandwiches for a while because we're around to. But let's take two more questions. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, the question about how much is the government paid to the company net or how you yeah, these are the production sharing contracts and uh, uh, in all three countries, and in both Ethiopia and Kenya, the government take is roughly 65 to 70%, so they take 65 to 70% of the profits, which is not too different from world average. World average is a little over 70% now. Um, you know, the worst contract on earth is 92%, which is probably down to And what do you look at when you sell this down? Current spend about 83, 84%. Uh, it's, it's, it's slipping up a little bit, they've changed a couple terms, but um, generally, it's linear with how much oil a country has. If you're Saudi Arabia, you can you don't even need production sharing. You you just do these little service contracts. You don't even allow foreigners in. Southern Iraq, you can give people a dollar fifty a barrel, and they're happy to come in. You know, the, the more frontier places, the more of the profits you have to give to them to encourage them. Now, the Kenyan contracts are good, but not great, which is good for us. If they were obscenely good. You know, the World Bank is, advise, is advising the Kenyan government that basically these are reasonable contracts. In, in the highest case, you know, which we start, think we're starting to head towards, 
Up to seven seventy eight percent of the, the debtors still pay full go to the government. So it's actually good, you know, to have a, a contract that's fair on both sides. So I think I think those contracts will hold. I, I don't see them changing those contracts. But they're they're plenty good for us. You know, the good part about production sharing contracts is you get a lot of cash to flow up front from cost recovery and your profit splits are higher in the beginning so you can recover your capital. Um, uh, and then as it becomes more and more profitable, more and more the share goes to the government. No, no, thanks. Uh, yeah, question on uh, the amount of recoverable resources that you have in Lokichar right now. Yeah. Talo says 300, but if you do the numbers yourself, either by using Lake Albert as a cross reference, you know the total estimate uh, for that Talo has, and you know the total net pay for that. You get a cross reference gives you a number for how much each net pay meter corresponds to in terms of uh, resources. And if you do the same exercise for Engana, your pre drill P50 estimate, uh, you get the same number there. So if you use that and apply that to the total net pay that you have in Lokishar right now, uh, you get a similar response that you get between seven and 900 million of barrels of oil with a mean estimate of 800. So, and I know that Talo likes being conservative. Uh, and I know that this assumes sim similarities in area of expansion and recovery rate. And I know that they're saying at least 300, but it's, if the name of the game would be to give the most likely estimate for amount of resources that you have, wouldn't that be somewhere around 800? Because I have really big problems getting to 300. So what are your thoughts on, uh, on, on you that? You really big trouble getting to 300? Yeah, but low yeah, 300. I mean, when I do the numbers, I think this is significantly higher than that internally. But you know, we as a public company under Canadian rules can only report what our third party auditor comes up with. Yeah. So Gap and Fine, but also the auditor of London Petroleum, mm -hmm. they're a very conservative bunch. But they came up with 367 with their most likely for just those three prospects. And, and even in Gap and Creed, it's only basically half of those prospects, a little less than half. Um, Paulo came up with the same number, roughly. They said in excess of 300. So I don't think we're really disagreeing with the QC. And then if, if, you, if you read what Paulo was saying in the press, there's maybe one to three billion ultimately from that basin, which is the same thing they're saying about Lake Albert. They basically have said publicly they think Lake Albert and Lokishar Basin will be roughly the same by the time they see uh, um, drill it out. So I think that's, uh, and we agree with that. I think if you look at the risk prospects, uh, it's 2.3 million unrisk um, plus the 300 we've already had, so say 3.7 billion um, total. You know, you have to pick your risk. Mm -hmm. If you think a 50% chance, I think we're the we're the idea that 50% is no longer an outrageous number, given that in in Uganda they had over 80% chance, 80% success rate. Um, you know, getting to that two billion barrels, one and a half two billion barrels is pretty. You know, reserve auditors have to piece out reserves. They are conservative. These are potentially bankable. You know, if, 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 if they're turned 2C into 2P, all you have to do is put in a development plan, uh, a pipeline, obviously, and funding. So these are actually numbers that at some point, if we wanted to, once that's all sorted out, it doesn't have to be built. It just has to be basically designed, contracted, and funding in place. These turn into bankable. Reserves. So I think they're being conservative. I think Paul is also maybe being a bit conservative, but uh, you know, I can't really speak for Paul. Uh, let, let them speak for themselves. Good, but I know that there are more questions, but we'll have uh, plenty of time uh, outside as well. And uh, again, thank you everyone for coming. And uh, as you know, we will be back and uh, telling more about the story in a few months. Thank you.